Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday. Okay, I'm just going to get... Is it Tuesday? Holy cow. Happy Tuesday. Oh, my gosh. Tom is... Time is... All right. It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> everybody. I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report. It's May 17th, 2023. We're live streaming on Rumble, YouTube, and Locals. If you have not joined us at rubinreport.locals.com, please do. We got a post-game show. You get insider info, advanced knowledge of things, and more. Uh, and we've got an iOS and Android app, so check it out. Uh, before we get to the meat of the show today, I just have to say, you know, right before the show, we always I always poll the guys, how are we going to do? How are we going to do today? And my feeling is, you know, anything above like a 9.5, anywhere from you know, a 9.5 and a 9.9, great show, great show. I'd like to say that we're mostly in that vicinity. The 10 is almost impossible. Perfection, I would say, is basically impossible. So it's very rare. Once, I think, we all finished up, we were like, that's as close to perfect as possible. But I would still say it would be like a 9.9999. The 10 is impossible. You know, it's, it would be like touching God. It's impossible. Right before uh, we started today, Phoenix says to the guys, well, what are we going to do today? Brock, what do you think? Brock goes 9-3. Lowballed me. So this show, I'm doing in spite. This is a spite show for Brock. I'm going to lay out a 9-7-9-8 right now. Okay? I promise you, it's coming. And uh, you're not getting lunch. That's how we're doing this today. What we're going to be talking about today, people, is bravery. Because it's important, it's needed, and I think... Perhaps there is a resurgence of it. We need some fearlessness. We need some people who are out there and willing to say what they believe and fight for the good things and return us to a, a degree of normalcy. It's happening on the ground. We're going to focus a lot of it on an interview that Elon Musk did yesterday with CNBC right after the Tesla shareholder meeting. I mean, it's not just that the guy's running this freaking Twitter thing. He's running Tesla. He's running SpaceX. And he's basically saying whatever he wants about pretty much everything, which I think is the antidote to almost all of our problems right now. And we must know, as I often say, guys, the people that we're fighting, and we're going to have evidence of it in today's show, they're not the brightest. That's number one. Number two, they're liars. Okay? So they're not bright and they're liars. And number three, if you just shine a little light on that, I think you can turn things around. That is our goal today. Nine seven to a nine nine. I gotta rethink this situation. Uh, let's talk about Genucel real quick and then we'll get to it. You know, Genucel skincare is powered by the skin nourishing of rare botanical extracts and in powerful antioxidants in a proprietary skincare case to deliver results you'll love, guaranteed. The Genucel therapy for under eye bags and puffiness can visibly diminish appearance of annoying bags and puffiness right before your eyes. Do I have any bags under my eyes? No, you see? Right now, save over 70% over at Genucel using their most popular package featuring their new ultra retinol with natural retinol alternative. And for a limited time, get a complimentary spa essentials box with every package plus free priority shipping. Go to genucel.com slash Dave. And now back to me. All right, here we go. So let's start uh, with this interview. One clip. We got a couple of them for you. First clip of Elon Musk, uh, who's running Tesla, running SpaceX, running the Twitter, doing the Neuralink, a whole bunch of other stuff. Busy guy, fairly busy guy. Uh, who sat down to do a live interview on CNBC immediately after this Tesla shareholder meeting yesterday, uh, which I believe was in Austin, Texas, right? That's where they are. That's probably where the meeting was. Uh, and uh, the reporter was asking him, hey, you know, you're, you're saying all this stuff all the time. Are you, are you worried about saying all the stuff and saying what you think? That could be problematic. You know, do your tweets hurt the company? Are there Tesla owners who say, I don't agree with his political position because, and I know it because he shares so much of it. Or are there advertisers on Twitter that Linda Yaccarina will come and say, you got to stop, man. Or, you know, I can't get these ads because of some of the things you tweet. You know, I'm reminded of uh, the, the, the scene in The Princess Bride. Great movie. Great movie. Um, where he confronts the person who killed his father. 
And he says, I, I, offer me money, offer me power. I don't care. So you just don't care. You want to share what you have to say? I'll say what I want to say, and if, 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 uh, if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. Okay. Okay, so there's a couple interesting things here. First off, that he makes a Princess Bride reference just in and of itself is pretty fantastic. But putting that aside for a second, first off, really think about it. What are the tweets that Elon Musk has put out there? What are the ideas, the thoughts that Elon Musk has put out there that are so controversial? Now, I get defending free speech is thought of as a controversial uh, idea in this very wacky world that we live in, but nothing he has put out has been bigoted or hateful or censorious or anything else. He's trying to even the playing field. He's doing it quite well so far. That doesn't mean he'll always do it well. We shall see. There are some questions as I addressed yesterday with this new CEO that he's hiring from NBC Universal, who definitely has a woke streak in her. So that is something to be addressed and he has promised to address it. So that's, let's just put that there. Uh, but as far as I know, he hasn't been saying anything really controversial in, in reality. Uh, but the other thing is, if he was woke, if he was a woke leftist, like most of the CEOs are, or at least pretend to be, he would never be getting asked this question, right? So if he was for chopping kids' genitals off, if he was for teaching neo-racism in schools and all of like the crazy nonsense, right? If he was for all of that, that wouldn't be thought of as controversial and there would be no need for a CNBC host to ask him those things. So the question, the nature of the question in and of itself is somewhat ridiculous and shows you how slanted everything is. And actually it shows you the, the very thesis of why Elon Musk got Twitter, which is we have to get out of this little box that cable news keeps us in, right? With their sort of overdone window on what we can talk about and how we can talk about it. He's actually widening the, uh, the lane that we can speak of things in, and that is pretty good. So uh, also the idea that, uh, you know, a guy, they always talk about F you money, you know, the phrase F you money, like, you know, when you have a certain amount of money, let's say 10 million bucks, 20 million bucks, he's got billions and billions of dollars. But when you have a certain amount of money, it's F you money, meaning then you can go ahead and say whatever you think. And I always think this is kind of funny because I, I know a lot of very, very rich people, including a couple billionaires. And what I have found generally is that the richer people get, the more they feel that they have to lose. So they start doing the reverse of what F you money might, what you might think F you money might do to you. They actually stop saying things because now they feel they have too many things to worry about and everything else and too many guns pointed at them and the rest of it. So the question really, I think for, for Elon and what I think is working for, uh, well, certainly for me and for you guys, people that are trying to fight for what is good, it's like, what I, let's put it this way. What is the, what's driving him? What is really driving him? Well, I think part of it is that the whole machine has become so completely ridiculous. It is so obvious that our opposition is either mind muddled or communist or socialist or some combination thereof, or a whole bunch of other things. Uh, first, let's, this is, this is an oldie, but a goodie. It's a little gratuitous, uh, but let's just remember uh, one of Joe Biden's greatest hits in the last year or so. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. Okay. And I don't know that that uh, was ever mobilized, but it was one of the things Joe Biden was up to. Uh, but then, of course, behind Joe Biden, right, and obviously there's a long list of videos we could have shown you of Joe Biden shaking hands with nobody, wandering off, uh, you know, having no idea where he's going off stage and the litany of things, the confusions, not knowing people's names, being handed notes, talking to the Easter Bunny. We could have done any of those, but that's just a little, we just, there's a little bite of Joe Biden for you. Uh, but of course, what uh, sits right behind Joe Biden is even scary. It's Kamala Harris. Uh, you might remember this one. And most recently, they even want to eliminate classes that teach, quote, gender ideology. Well, so what are we talking about here? Classes that teach women's history? Women's equality? The study of the fact that there are still only 25 women in the United States Senate in a body of 100? He is just something else. First off, 
gender ideology has nothing to do with women's history. Women's history, like say American history or black history or whatever history, history, the facts behind history are just that, they're facts. So no one's saying don't teach the history of women in America the right to vote, the right to work, et cetera, et cetera. That is very different. It has absolutely nothing to do with gender ideology. And I would say she either knows that, but I don't know if she knows that. So she either knows it or doesn't know it. It's almost irrelevant at this point, but these are just not the best and the brightest, right? Joe Biden, not the best and the brightest. Kamala Harris, not the best and the brightest. Uh, but speaking of not the best and the brightest, we had a little debate. We had a debate this morning. Do we play a video of John Fetterman? It is such low hanging fruit. This thing is so ridiculous. It is so patently absurd that this man is a Senator that do we show you this? Now he got out of, uh, he was in a home. He was in like Shady Pines or something. He was a little depressed, a little depressed. He was in a home, hasn't really done much work. Finally, they get him out there. He is the Senator from Pennsylvania, as you know. They're at a Senate hearing and here unedited, unedited for you is about 90 seconds of John Fetterman. May God have mercy on your soul. Is, is it staggering? Is it a staggering response to responsibility that, a, the, that the head of a bank could literally, could literally crash our economy? It's astonishing. That's like if you have, I mean, like, and, and they also realize is that, that that now they have it's in a guaranteed a guaranteed way to be saved by no again by no matter no by, by by how you know so it's it's you know isn't it appropriate that the those kinds of the, this kind of control should be more stricter to prevent this kind of thing from going or should we just go on and start bailing and sailing whoever bank regardless of how how there's there conduct is. You know, if, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the Republicans want to give a, a work requirement for SNAP, you know, for a, 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 a hungry family has to, to have these this kind of penalties or these some kinds of word working uh, required. Shouldn't you have a working requirement after we sale your bank you, with billions of your bank? Because they seem to be more pre preoccupied uh, when then SNAP uh, and uh, requirements for works for hungry people, but not about pr protecting the, ta the tax papers, you know, that will bail no matter whatever does about a bank to crash it. All right, honestly, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I really don't. We all kind of had the same reaction and we've already watched it this morning. It's like, first off, this, where he stops several times, the implication is now respond, right? So I wish they had had the video on the person he's talking to as well, because how could you ever respond to any of that, right? It's, it's circular, it's confused, it's muddled. Like you sort of have a sense of what he's saying that we shouldn't be bailing out banks because he wants money to go to other programs, SNAP programs. But it's just like, do you think, honestly, does anyone in this country honestly believe this man should be a senator? Dr. Oz could have been the senator. And you might not like Dr. Oz for whatever reason. You may not think he was great. Maybe he didn't spend enough time in Pennsylvania, whatever it is. But Dr. Oz would be up there speaking in full sentences. But this is what we're up against. A guy with dementia, a man, a woman, who is just not that bright to say the least, and then basically an incapacitated vegetable. That is what I think Elon Musk is seeing. It's what I'm seeing, it's what you're seeing. This is not the best of the best. Why do we keep losing to them? I think there are reasons for that. There's algorithmic reasons, there's corporate reasons, there's probably philosophical reasons and, and religious reasons to it, but I think we can get over it. Uh, but the sheer stupidity and, and ugh, it's not just stupidity, it's, it's, it's almost evil to some degree because this is just not how it's supposed to be. But the sheer stupidity is not just limited to our government, it's the entire machine. And I think that's why you should start being a little more feel it, fearless yourself. They can't get all of us. So you may have seen this video. So this video is from uh, about a month ago. Uh, this is a Miller Lite beer commercial celebrating uh, Women's History Month. 
uh, by a comedian named Alana Glazer, but it's been making the rounds over the last couple of days. Again, now you, this is, you could sort of put this to the backdrop of what happened with Bud Light, right? Bud Light gets sponsored by Dylan Mulvaney, who is a dude who dresses like a woman. Bud Light is now absolutely in the tank, and I don't think they're coming back. Anheuser-Busch is in a lot of trouble. Well, Miller Light did their own sort of version of the Bud Light situation, and only now is it kind of picking up steam. Take a look. A little known fact, women were among the very first to brew beer ever. From Mesopotamia to the Middle Ages to colonial America, women were the ones doing the brewing. Centuries later, how did the industry pay homage to the founding mothers of beer? They put us in bikinis. Wow. Look at this shit. Wild. It's time beer made it up to women. So today, Miller Lite is on a mission to clean up not just their shit, but the whole beer industry's shit. Miller Lite has been scouring the internet for all this shit and buying it back so that they can turn it into good shit for women brewers. Literally, good shit. How, you ask? Ladies, take it away. First, we turn the bad sh into compost. Then we feed compost to worms. Push out beautiful fertilizer. That good sh helps farmers grow quality hops. Which is then donated to women brewers to make their own really good sh But there's definitely more sh out there. In your attic, in the garage, in your parents' basement. Send any sh you got into Miller Lite and they'll turn that into good sh too. Oh. So here's to women, because without us, there would be no beer. Uh, all right. Well, first off, Phoenix just goes, she's the reason misogyny exists. Okay. That's, that's one personal opinion of Phoenix, the producer. Um, does that make anyone, let, let's just put aside all of the just general nonsense to it for just a second. Does that make anyone want to drink Miller Lite beer? Do you think one man was watching that and been like, um, okay, I, this makes me want to drink Miller Lite beer. And do you think one woman was watching it and was like, all right, they're finally doing it my way. I'm going to drink Miller Lite beer. Brock just said he's never seen a woman drink Miller Lite beer. Generally, women don't drink beer as much. So if you're shifting your whole market towards trans women or women women, you're probably not doing something great. Full disclosure, I used to do stand-up way back when, 20-something years ago with Alana. She was a perfectly fine comedian. I kind of liked her in a way. We once got into a debate, though. I liked Tim Allen. She really hated Tim Allen. There was a big debate we had about that one night, but okay, sidebar. Uh, anyway, this desire for, for these companies to destroy themselves, it just never ends. Uh, so then because that video was making the rounds, then a couple other things of Alana made, made the rounds. And again, I don't really mean to make this about her, but I think it just shows you the type of people that succeed in the system, right? And what do I always tell you about Stephen Colbert? He gives the machine what it wants. Uh, here's video of Alana on Colbert, giving the machine exactly what it wants. She's uh, talking to him because he's a decent white man. Since we've been watching all this, you yeah. know, fake news and whatever, real news and the president, I, and uh, anticipating coming here tonight, I have been thinking, Stephen, that you are a really um, model white man. You're a, a really- well, I, I am the picture in the dictionary next to white man, I think. You're they don't get much whiter than me. <laughs> you are the good version of one because almost our president is almost like the number one white guy that, you know, in America, because he's the president. But I'm also yeah. like, oh, so Stephen Colbert is. You've just been um, revealing yourself to us over the years in the way. I've been watching Strangers with Candy lately, mm -hmm. and uh, you've just been revealing yourself in this sincere way. You know, guys, they're the racist. And we really just got to like, just like sit with that and know it and accept it. Like you're the good white man. I get, I get she's trying to be funny, like not really accomplishing it. I suppose she's trying to be funny. And then he just sits there and okay, pat me on the head, blah, blah, blah. But you're the good white man. Cause you do everything that the woke left wants, right? You give the machine everything it wants. But she continued with edgy comedy because on this, she had this show broad city. I've never seen it. Uh, but they, they refused to say the word Trump on the show because it was edgy comedy. You guys made a little bit of political comedy news in the last couple of days yeah. because what you're doing something special this season with, uh, well, with our, with our president. What is it? Yes, we are bleeping his last name. President Bleep. Um, he gets enough airtime as it is. 
And, you know, it's in, in the world, it would be better not to hear it. Now, it's going to make it sound... <laughs> You could actually say anything you you could say anything you want in that moment. You and, that's right. and people would know what you were saying. You could say you're saying Trump, but you could say anything you want right. in that moment. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Like, all right, you don't say his name. Very edgy comedy, fine. Now, why am I showing you all that? Because I wanted to prove two things with all of these clips. First off, they're not giving us the best of the best out of the political establishment, right? So you got Biden, you got Kamala, you got Fetterman, you guys get it. You got AOC, you got the rest of them. This is, this is just not the best of the best. And then culturally, what are we seeing on television with our comedians? Well, you've got this Glazer chick, you've got Colbert. This is not the best of the best. And why do they keep showing us these people? Uh, it's because it's their goal basically is to rot us out so we will not know what is real, what is good, we will not know facts, we will not know humor, we will not know anything else. And it allows them to put enough chaos out there that the lies just spread endlessly. But I am a believer that the truth will always prevail. And there are other people out there that, believes, that believe that the truth will prevail. Elon Musk is one of them. Um, you know, you do some tweets that seem to be, or at least give support to some who would call others conspiracy theories. Well, yes, but I mean, honestly, you know, w w some of these conspiracy theories uh, have turned out to be true. Which ones? Well, like the, the Hunter Biden laptop. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, you know that, that 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 was a pretty big deal. There was Twitter and 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 others engaged in active suppression of information that was relevant to the public. Um, that's that's a that's a terrible thing that happened. That's election right. interference. Okay, so you see what's going on here, guys. We live in this time with sort of oh uh, well, not that word. Uh, we live in a time of uh, not that bright politicians, and we live in a time of bad comedians. Our cultural taste makers aren't being honest with us. Our politicians aren't being honest with us. And then along comes this tech guy who's just trying to clean it up a little bit. And then you see how the mainstream media reacts. To him. I'm not even telling you that that interviewer was so horrible. Like he wasn't, he wasn't like unbelievably horrible. Uh, but the idea that he's questioning Elon because Elon's just trying to open up the books, just trying to go, oh, the government was working with Twitter to censor people. People have been shadow banned and everything else. And now we are finding out that more and more of what we were told was definitely true, like Russia collusion all these years, yeah, it was all complete nonsense. Uh, we've got some info here from the Daily Wire. Special counsel John Durham, who was tasked by former Attorney General Bill Barr to examine the propriety, propriety of the FBI's investigation of President Trump, released a 320-page report Monday that found that the FBI had no evidence to support a Trump-Russia scandal when it began its investigation and found sobering differences in how it approached the Trump probe compared to other politically sensitive investigations. It said the FBI immediately opened a full investigation based on a brief note from an Australian diplomat recounting that he had met with George Papadopoulos, a volunteer with the Trump campaign, in which he mentioned that Russia might have information negative to Hillary Clinton. At the time, the opening of Crossfire Hurricane, the FBI did not possess any intelligence showing that anyone associated with the Trump campaign was in contact with Russian intelligence officers at any point during the campaign, the Durham report said. Guys, you really gotta understand. I know you get it, right? Like, I know you get it. But you've got to tell other people. <laughs> You have to tell everyone. You have to get into town square, stand on a rock and scream. Russia collusion, all of it was nonsense from the beginning. There is far more evidence that points to the Clinton campaign and now even to Obama having known about what they were trying to do to Trump even before he took office. And now what's happening is because of this report, even the mainstream media, which, which endlessly pushed these lies. Why did I not push these lies all these years? I've been on all these years since before the Trump presidency. Why don't you, where is it? Where, that, why is it? Am I such a genius that I wasn't fooled by this? Or I had already peered behind the curtain and realized that it was all nonsense, probably the way you did as well. And had there been evidence, I would have gladly talked about it. Like that's just, if you're a decent human being. 
But these people on mainstream media, they pushed the lies relentlessly, and now they're having to walk back a little bit. Here's the one guy that people seem to think is still decent on CNN, Jake Tapper. I'm not so sure about the decent part, but he's uh, trying to have like a little bit of a mea culpa here, maybe. But President Trump appeared so confident of what Durham would find, he openly uh, pressured the special counsel to release his findings before the 2020 election. Regardless, the report is now here. It has dropped. And it might not have produced everything of what some Republicans hoped for. It, it is, regardless, devastating to the FBI. And to a degree, it does exonerate. Not to a degree it does exonerate Donald Trump. It completely exonerates Donald Trump. So even in his mea culpa, even saying the FBI really effed this one up, he's still, you know, he's still shaving off the top a little bit. And I don't know what you do with someone like Jake, because I saw when that, when that clip that I just showed you, when that was going viral yesterday, people were like, oh, Jake Tapper, you see, he gets what's going on and he's not that terrible. Except if it would not take you more than two seconds to find roughly, I don't know, 500 billion clips of Jake Tapper pushing Russia collusion nonsense for years. Here's one from 2017. I mean, we could have picked any. Here's just, here's just an old throwback. We have some breaking news now. CNN has learned new information about that ongoing investigation into those allegations raised in a collection of memos created by a former British intelligence agent at the time he made the memos for political opponents of then-candidate Donald Trump. Jim Shuto and Evan Perez have been working the story. And Jim, let's start with you. What precisely have investigators learned? Well, Jake, for the first time, U.S. investigators say that they have corroborated some of the communications detailed in a 35-page dossier compiled by a former British intelligence agent. CNN was first to report last month that then-president-elect Donald Trump and President Barack Obama were briefed on the existence of the memos prior to the inauguration. Until now, U.S. officials have said that none of the content or allegations have been verified. But now, multiple current and former U.S. law enforcement and intelligence officials tell CNN that intelligence intercepts of foreign nationals confirmed that some of the conversations described in the dossier took place between the same individuals on the same days and from the same locations as detailed in the dossier. We should be clear that CNN has not confirmed the content of the calls or whether any of the content relates to then-candidate Trump. Isn't it incredible now watching that seven years later? Like, it was all a lie. And even the way Tapper kicks it off, ongoing investigations into allegations by a British spy. It all sounds like something without really saying anything. And then they bring on Jim Shooter. And because he talks like a newsman and we heard this from a British spy, and you start thinking it's real. And it was all absolute nonsense. So I actually, this is an open-ended question for you guys. Let's, let's hit this in the, in the post-game show on Locals. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Like, what, what do you do with a guy like Tapper? Like, to me, all of these people should be fired. They should all be so shamed and fired and everything else. But like, how much leeway should there be on people that lie about everything and then eventually kind of get it right? I don't know that if you're in the media, you should have much leeway on that. Imagine if I had just lied to you about a gajillion things over these last six years. I'm pretty sure you would watch something else. I would recommend you watch something else. I'd probably find another line of work to be in. But these people are absolutely shameless. And it's not just, obviously it's not just Russia, it's COVID. It's absolutely everything. So speaking of guys that lie, Adam Schiff, you remember Adam Schiff, Congressman Adam Schiff, who I think is now running to be Senator from California because he's a Democrat with Democrat privilege, which means if you screw everything up, you get to move up the ladder. Uh, here's a little compilation of him just lying. Everything that you're about to see is a complete lie. It starts off with Chuck Todd and then it's a Schiff liapalooza. Enjoy. There's been no shortage of investigations into President Trump now or soon to be underway. They're looking into the president's tax returns, his inaugural committee, the Trump Organization, Russian influence in the campaign, and a lot more. At the center of many of these investigations is going to be the House Intelligence Committee. And at the head of that committee is its chairman, Adam Schiff. But we do know this. The Russians offered help. The campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help and the president made full use of that help. And that is pretty damning. Whether it's simply Donald Trump um, reacting to the question that's been raised about his legitimacy because of the, the taint over the election. Uh, but when people uh, say there's no collusion, they must have a different word for the kind of corrupt coordination of effort between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Uh, we know that the president has made uh, 
probably over a thousand false statements uh, about the Russia issues. It's very clear that the Trump campaign welcomed Russian help, built it into their campaign plan, never reported it, uh, made full use of it, and then lied about it. Bob Mueller did not find that there was no collusion. In fact, in the first couple pages of the report, he said we don't address that issue. What we found is we could not prove criminal conspiracy beyond a reasonable doubt. The president had just incited a mob that attacked the Capitol and killed, uh, resulted in the deaths of, of five people. All right, so that's endless lies over the course of several years. He will not pay a price for it. He will still run for senator. He'll probably be a senator from California, and that's how the thing will work. But we have to expose these people. And again, you have to know it. I have to know it, and then we have to convince more people of it so that we can actually change things because otherwise the lies, they will never stop. No one ever pays the price, right? The vaccines will work. You better take a vaccine. No one gets fired. Russia collusion. Ah, the election was illegitimate when it was the guy that we didn't like. Then when it was the guy we did like, you're not allowed to say anything. We've got to put an end to all of this, but it never stops. And don't worry, guys, I don't want to pick on Schiff. It's not just Schiff. How about a little Eric Swalwell? You remember Eric Swalwell. He's the worst of the worst. The guy has been caught. It is a known fact that he slept with a Chinese spy. The way you know it's a fact is because Kevin McCarthy, House Leader Kevin McCarthy, has said it publicly many times, and the media refuses to report on it. You would think that if they knew it was a lie, they would be using it to destroy Kevin McCarthy. He's lying about Eric Swalwell sleeping with a Chinese spy, but they're ignoring it, which means that it's true. Uh, here is Swalwell talking to Wolf Blitzer, very serious newsman, Wolf Blitzer, and telling him that there's strong and clear evidence of Russia collusion. In our investigation, we saw strong evidence of collusion. The Republicans now are choosing to bury it. I don't know what you call it when the Russians make multiple approaches to members of the Trump family, the Trump organization, the Trump campaign, to offer and preview dirt on Hillary Clinton, where the candidate stands in front of a public crowd and says, Russia, you'll be rewarded if you hack her deleted emails. And then once Russia does it, the campaign doesn't report to law enforcement its prior contacts with Russia. They actually amplify through social media, the candidate's own words, what Russia hacked. I, I think that is, uh, it, that's clear collusion, but there's also evidence that the public has not yet seen that we think if we release our transcripts, they would also find us. Are you going to? Yeah, well, how about you release those transcripts now, now that we know it's all BS. So he's an absolute liar and again, slept with a, Chinese spy. Uh, but now let me uh, connect this to something else that's happened in the last couple of weeks. As you guys know, Tucker Carlson is no longer with Fox News. So probably the guy who is the most influential political talker in the country, right? Specifically political talker, political analyst in the country was fired by the number one cable news show. Uh, he had Eric Swalwell on back in 2017. So again, this is six, seven years ago, had Eric Swalwell on and he was telling him way back then that the Trump Russia stuff was complete nonsense. And it makes you wonder, so why did Tucker get fired? Because he was getting a lot of things right. Take a look at this. He is competing in energy with them in a way Obama never tried. Why is he more pro-Russian than Obama was? Don't confuse what he has to do because the public sentiment is so high and watching him. <laughs> Again, you give him too much credit. You're giving really? him too much credit. I'm not giving him credit. I'm yeah. criticizing yeah. him. I don't think he should be doing any of yeah. it. I'm just saying yeah. this whole thing is insane. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, and okay. then you have all Almost the consciousness of, of consciousness of guilt evidence, right? All of the lies that have been told, whether it's about the June 9th meeting, the Russian adoption excuse, and then moving it right, to okay. what it was really about. I, okay. But, so that's, that's consciousness of guilt. A lot of times the way someone acts after an investigation is launched, can tell you what they were doing. I guess at the time. I'm not. You know what? I'm not. So again, maybe don't that's not confuse. Why I'm not don't Congress. confuse evidence okay. with a conclusion. There's more than enough evidence to continue and find out how close were these ties. Did the and willingness and eagerness add up? I was hoping for some. Remember, guys, six years ago, Tucker Carlson, who's no longer with Fox News, was basically saying this was all BS. I do a news show every day. I never gave it any credence. Why is it that everyone in mainstream media and all of the political elite and all the Dems fell for it. Well, I think you know the answer, right? They just wanted to get rid of Trump and truth be damned, right? Like it did not matter what the truth is. We are going to take these guys out. But that leads us to something else that I'm always talking about, how we are living in very different realities right now. And even people on the other side of that reality are starting to understand the danger of that. Now, I would argue it's mostly their fault. They've lied about so many things 
for so long, COVID and Russia and very fine people on both sides. And you, you guys know it, Brett Kavanaugh, serial rapist, Jesse Smollett was going to be hanged. Uh, the, that's been beaten with a Subway sandwich or whatever the hell was going on with him. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, Covington kids, like they lie and lie and lie. All the shootings, they pick whether it's a white supremacist, even if it's a Mexican woman, all the stuff. You got it. Okay, fine. What I'm realizing now is that even the people on the other side of this who have been the purveyors of the lies, who have been the ones pushing the machine to lie more and more, now they're realizing that we are starting to have an actual crisis in reality. Here is Barack Obama just in the last couple of days. He is now worried that we're going to live in two very different worlds. I would argue it's largely because of him and the entire machine that backs him, but suddenly he's starting to be concerned about that. Take a look. I'm an optimistic man. Mm -hmm but I find myself falling into this space where I have concern about the country that they will inherit right. once I'm gone. Post-presidency, what about this country keeps you up at night? The thing that I'm most worried about is the degree to which we now have a divided conversation, in part because we have a divided media, right? So. I'm much older than you, Nate. You don't look it, though. Th that's what I was fishing for. <laughs> um, but when I was coming up, you had three TV stations. Yeah. And people were getting a, a similar sense of what is true and what isn't, what was real and what was not. Today, what I'm most concerned about is the fact that because of the splintering of the media, we almost occupy different realities. If something happens, in the past, everybody could say, all right, we may disagree on how to solve it, but at least we all agree that, yeah, that's an issue. Now, people will say, well, that didn't happen, <laughs> or I don't believe that. Okay, so first off, I want to give the devil his due here. Obama is actually just repeating something that I often say, right? Like, we are, depending on what news you live in, uh, you watch, living in very different worlds. When he talks about growing up, ABC, NBC, CBS, they had nightly news at 6.30 p.m., and depending on whether you like Tom Brokaw or Peter Jennings, you would decide uh, which news you were, were going to watch because they basically covered the exact same stuff. Now, we might argue, you can argue, that that was pretty good for the reasons that Obama's saying it, that we could, we basically, as Americans, had, this, had a certain Overton window which allowed us to see certain things, and then we could argue about policy, but our basic reality was the same. Then, of course, after just network news, then we got cable news, 24-hour news, then we got the internet, and it's, it's frayed in a million different ways. So I will give him credit for saying that his concern is right, but it's, he's only coming up with this concern because I think they're losing the narrative. I think he's realizing, boy, this is a problem now uh, because so many people are seeing we have lied about everything. And because we have lied about everything, people are starting to tune out from us. I think Obama, because I do think he's a control freak to a degree and he, and he has definite socialist impulses, I think he would love if the state had the power to control the media enough so that the people would just understand the one thing and it would be the one thing that he wants. But again, given the devil is due, he is right. We are living in two different worlds. I would say one of those worlds is filled with lies. That is, I just gave you the long list of the laundry list of lies, right? And one of those is filled with the truth. And I would like to believe that we're a little bit more on the side of the truth here, that Tucker has been a little bit more on the side of the truth, that people like Elon Musk and Joe Rogan, all the people trying to siphon through all of the BS and come out with some sense of reality, they're a little more on the side of the truth rather than the people who just swallow the state line, believe the corporate press, and then get proven wrong on everything but never pay the price on it. So what do we do? How do we, how do we, let's say, expand the truth? Well, we've got to build systems that will do it. We have to build systems that will allow the truth to get out there. One of the drawbacks of having only ABC, NBC, and CBS at 6.30 is that that slim Overton window, while it was good because we could all sort of believe the same things, we don't know how much truth couldn't get in, right? We don't know how many things they had to ignore or what they didn't want us to know about and everything else. So if we are a little... Uh, more brave, if we show a little more ambition, maybe we can actually innovate. Maybe we could do things like, I don't know, create a tech company like Locals that could then join up with Rumble to defend free speech. You know what happened, by the way? This is just a slight sidebar, but do you know a couple months ago uh, in France, they wanted Rumble to take down a couple videos and they said, if you don't take down these Russian 
it was RT, Russia Today related videos, we're gonna take Rumble down from, your, from the entire country. And Chris Pavlovsky, who's a friend of mine and also the CEO of the company, he said, we will not take down those videos. And if you wanna take us off your entire country, go ahead and do so. And that's exactly what France did. But the point is we stood up for free speech. What Elon is doing right now with Twitter is standing up for free speech. Uh, and uh, that was a hell of a segue because I've got another video right now of Elon Musk talking about free speech and Twitter. Let's talk about free speech a bit. You know, you call yourself a free speech absolutist. You want Twitter, and this is a I mean, Aspirationally. Aspirationally, you want Twitter to be as truthful as possible. Most yes. accurate source of information about the world. Um, so what does that mean for how you police lies on the platform? You mentioned community notes. Is that the I think, extent I think community notes, yeah. I mean, I'd say, so my overall kind of vision for X or Twitter is uh, to be a cybernetic collective mind for humanity. This is going to sound quite esoteric and sci-fi, but um, so the, if, if, you know, in, in pursuit of that objective, uh, you want to have uh, information move quickly, have that information be uh, accurate, and you want to have error correction on that information. So you can think of community notes as like an error correction uh, on information in the network. Um, and the effect of community notes is actually bigger than it would seem. It's, it's bigger than the number of notes. Um, because if somebody knows that they're going to get noted, uh, they are less likely to say something that is false uh, because it's embarrassing to get community noted. Okay. But and, somebody... and, those, and that applies even to advertisers. By the way. Okay, so there's something interesting going on here. First of, all, first of all, if you're not on Twitter, and as I always say, if you're not on Twitter, there's no reason to get on Twitter. Although it is way more interesting now than it was, say, a year ago. Uh, but if you're not on Twitter, you don't know what community notes are. Very briefly, community notes is an account that they created in essence to crowdsource truth so that if someone goes up there and just blatantly lies about something, whether it's a politician, a media person, a random account, whatever it is, just absolutely blatantly lies about something, they crowdsource enough information from enough users of Twitter, and then it puts a tag on that tweet saying what the actual truth is. And it can, and I think you can sort of click further and find out a little bit more about the information, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other part that he mentioned that's really interesting is that once you have something like that in place, it actually de facto encourages people not to lie as much because people don't want to be hit with this community notes warning. It makes you look illegitimate. So that in and of itself, just having a system that, he, it's not a perfect system, it absolutely isn't a perfect system because you could have a truth that a whole bunch of people don't like and they could overwhelm the system with lies. So it's not a perfect system, but he's trying to come up with something for our collective hive mind. As he said, it's very sci-fi. He's trying to do a little something uh, and, and it seemingly is working at the moment. And that truth, is the biggest threat to the liars. That is it right there, guys. So you have to build systems that incentivize truth. That's what he's doing. I think you personally, you gotta tell the truth and you just have to be fearless in the face of a president who can't speak English, of a vice president who's not that bright, of a senator from Pennsylvania who is muddled beyond imagination between comedians who are liars and ex-presidents who are now only getting it because they're losing the narrative. If you follow that blueprint, I think we can overcome the bravery deficit. And there was this guy a couple of years ago who did a video on PragerU called the bravery deficit and we got a little clip of it. I like that guy. Who's that guy? Because there's a mass affliction spreading throughout the Western world. It's called the bravery deficit. People, good people like you, are afraid to say what they think. And there's little wonder. The understandable temptation is to think that this politically correct madness will soon end, just die out on its own. Well, it won't. If you're one of the people who believes that if you just remain quiet, that things will get better, well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're a frog in a slowly boiling pot, and it doesn't end well for the frog. So what can you do? Believe it or not, the solution is not that hard. Step one, think for yourself. Step two, say it out loud. Be better than those who would silence you, deplatform you, and mob you. How? Just stop being afraid. How my beard got less granted over the years is a modern miracle. We'll have to look into that. I want to thank you people for watching the show today. Brock, you're not having lunch because I am officially declaring this a 9-7. It was a fine show. I think it was ideologically sound. I think we debunked some lies. I think we told something 
True, was there any laughs today? Because the other, on Monday I forgot to laugh, I had a couple laughs, and then yesterday we had a couple laughs. I had, was there a laugh today? There was, yeah. tomorrow will be funny. That's the plan, that's the plan. We're gonna, we're slowly ramping up now that I'm back in studio, you know what I mean? Uh, if you want to join us for the post-game show, we'll be there in about 42 seconds, rubenreport.locals.com. We leave you with a uh, slightly edited video of Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci. Goodbye. And within 11 months, have a vaccine. You know, when I first saw it, I thought, that can't work. There is so much conspiracy theory. They were absolutely correct. We have a generation that's speaking out on this topic. Yeah. Not easy. Uh, but since it may be necessary to avoid climate change, we shouldn't give up. And it needs a level of cooperation. The emergence of a new infection, a brand new disease killing almost everybody. 